Welcome to one of our how-to videos. Uh, the one I'm doing this afternoon is what in the world are all these small groups at our church? Uh, you know, I see these posters on the church wall. And we'll be showing you those in a minute here. What is a connect group? What is a get together group? What is a 40 day adventure group? How do they relate? Do they all go on at once? Which one should I pick? Why would I want to attend one? Well, if you have a few minutes here, let me explain. Now, we know that the Bible clearly states that we are to be in relation to not only our Lord and Savior, but also, as Mark 12, 30 and 31 tells us, quote, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Now, the Bible further clarifies our neighbors into several categories. One of them being our fellow brothers and sisters in our local assembly. In fact, the Bible gives specific commands how to interact with our local assembly brothers and sisters. We find many of these commands in what we call the one another's. Now, you may ask, you've probably heard that term, but you may ask why they're labeled that way. Well, let me quote a few to you, and then you tell me why they're named that way. John 13, 34, and 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Romans 12, 10. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. How about Romans 15, 14? Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. How about Galatians 5, 13? For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through, serve, but through love, serve one another. So do you, I know a little bit over the top, but do you see why they're called one another's? And there's anywhere between 50, 60, 70 more of these in the New Testament. Okay, so think about this next question. Since we're commanded, and each of these were commands, to do these things, where and when can we do them? Can you do this during the Sunday school? And church service? Well, partially maybe in the science school and then maybe in the church service, but you really can't do a decent job of doing these, especially to more than one person at once. God intends for us to interact and be in each other's lives continually. We are not to be islands or cocooning and avoiding our brothers and sisters in Christ. The Bible is universal. We understand that. The written word gives us principles, but rarely specific particulars. Why do you think that might be? Well, because it was written to first century people. It was written to second century people. It was written to, written to middle age people, the middle ages. It was written to us 21st century people. It was written to Asians, Americans, Africans, Europeans, city folk, country folk. You get the picture. So it's up to each local assembly's leaders the Lord's wisdom and the Holy Spirit and much thought and prayer to come up with the method that is biblically accurate and also fits the local time and place and accomplishes what God wants us to do. And that's what we've done with our, what we call our connect groups. We've attempted to provide an environment in an atmosphere where iron can sharpen iron and where we can practice the one another's on each other so we can grow spiritually. It is also an answer to the Lord's command to make disciples. I don't know if you thought about this or not, but we're in effect discipling each other in a group setting. Now, it, obviously, it's not as efficient and as, as effective as a one-to-one -one discipling situation or a couple-to-couple, -couple, but understand this. It is a first step for many people to expose themselves to this type of situation, and a lot of people go from this situation, connect groups, into a one-to-one -one discipleship situation. So what are these different groups? Well, let me see if I can pull up my PowerPoint here and uh, show you here. 
Okay, share the screen. Okay, we you've seen this on the wall. We have three different things here: get connect groups, adventure groups, and get together groups. Now, the connect groups were the original things. These meet weekly. Uh, it's basically a six-month commitment. We start these around Christmas time, sometimes before, and it goes through the month of May. Uh, normally, it's a group of six to twelve people. It can be singles. It can be couples. Uh, we have one ladies group, ladies only group, and it's spiritual growth discussion. And normally, with these connect groups, we talk about the previous week's sermon, and we have some questions to help the discussion. Now, the get-together groups on the opposite end there, you see in the, on the far left on your slide, uh, are for the summertime. And these meet once a month and three-month commitment. So we're asking for a, one meeting in June, one in July, and one August. And uh, they're made up of maybe uh, two or three couples. And it's a casual conversation. There's no Bible study. This is basically an uh, adult play group. Uh, we're, we're making play dates for all of you, or you make your own. Uh, we, we feel, as a pastor team, and I think the Bible would, would, would uh, agree with this, that you should be getting together with other believers, brothers and sisters in Christ. So this is just a way to, uh, once a month, get together, do anything you want, or cook out, go to the ice cream parlor. Uh, of course, this year with coronavirus, uh, you might have to sit in your tailgate six feet apart. But uh, whatever's going on, it's, this is just a very light commitment. And what we normally do is have two couples out of our connect group invite a third couple who's not involved in small groups just to meet over the summer. Again, no Bible study, no heavy theological discussion, unless it goes that way, just to get, get to know someone else in the church. Now, the adventure group is a whole different thing. We Every fall, at least we have the last two years, and it looks like this year also, uh, we're planning what we call a 40-day adventure, where the sermon series is designed around one topic, and then during the week, we meet together in small groups to discuss a little further in detail about the sermon. And we call those adventure groups. They meet weekly, and it's only a 40-day commitment. And this is the way a lot of people first get into uh, small groups, actually. Uh, six weeks, they promise to meet. And it's uh, eight to 10 people. And again, we discuss the, the content of the adventure that we're talking about, whatever the sermon thing is. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about why we have different types of connect groups. And again, since these are just methods trying to follow biblical principles, they could change in the future. I want to end with this. Jesus lived his whole adult life in community with his disciples. The question is, how will you live your adult life? Let me quote 1 John 2, 6. He who says he abides in him ought to himself also walk just as he did. Again, that's up to you and the Holy Spirit, but I hope this helps. Thank you very much, and goodbye.